So, all right, so now we are going to write the localization manager class. This is going to be a little bit of a longer block uh, because this is a bigger script. So I just wanted to get the explanations out of the way in the previous block so that if anybody wanted to skip ahead, they could. Um, okay, so the first function we will write will be called when we select a language by clicking one of the two flag buttons or the labels for the flag buttons in our loading screen. So it, the function needs to be public so that the button can call it and it's going to take a string as an argument uh, and that's going to be the string for the file name to load. So we're going to store that in the button. So first of all, in Localization Manager, we're not going to need to update and get rid of that. And we are going to write a public function that returns void and it's going to be called load localized text. And it's going to take a string called file name. So that is going to be the file name of the JSON file to load. Next, we're going to need a variable for our dictionary. So we are going to add a private dictionary and dictionary takes generic parameters for the key and the value type, right? So we're going to specify the key is going to be a string and the value is also going to be a string, right? So we're going to have a collection of strings that we're going to access with string addresses and this is going to be called localized text. Now, in load localized text, we're going to set localized text to be a new dictionary. So we're going to create a new empty dictionary. And then we need some JSON data to deserialize into it. So in order to work with file pass, we need to add the using system.io, which allows us to work with files. Uh, we need to add that namespace declaration and then we're going to add a string variable called file path and that's going to be equal to path.combine application dot streaming streaming assets path. So there is that streaming assets path I mentioned earlier. So we're going to be using the path to the file and joining it together with the file name, combining it using path.combine to make a new string that is the actual path to the file. And then we're going to check, because we don't want to try to load a file that's not there, we're going to check if file dot, not that, if file dot exists at file path, right? So we're going to use if file.exists at the file path that we just created, we're going to check if that file is present. And then we are going to read in all of the text from that JSON file. So we're going to declare a string, which is going to be called data as JSON. And that's going to be equal to file.readAllText from our file path. So now, We've gone into the file, pulled out all of the JSON formatted data, and put it in our string data as JSON, right? We've read it in. If the file's not present, we want to throw an error. So we're going to put an else, and we're going to debug.log error cannot find file. Now, once we have the file, we will deserialize the JSON data in the file back into an object. So in this case, a localization data object. And we're going to store that in a variable of that type called loaded data. So here, back in our first uh, set of braces where we've chosen, let's add a space here so we can read this a little better. So we can check if the file exists, if the file does exist, we're going to say localization data loaded data. So we're going to declare a new variable data uh, of the type localization data. And then that's going to be equal to JSON utility dot from JSON. So we're going to call JSON utility dot from JSON, which is going to 
deserialize this string of data we have and turn it back into from is going to turn it from a bunch of text into a localization data object. So we're going to pass it the type that we want the type of object that we want to deserialize that data into and that type is going to be localization data and then the actual data is going to be data as JSON. So once we've loaded the data into an object, we need to put it into our empty dictionary. We will do this using a for loop in which we grab the key and value for each object in the items array that we created earlier, and we're going to populate our dictionary with those key value pairs. So we're going to need a for loop, and I'm just going to type for and then push double tab to autocomplete it. And this is going to be the loaded dot, loaded data dot items dot length so we're going to loop over the entire length of the items array in loaded data and we're going to then set we're going to then add to our localized text dictionary loaded data dot items I, so that index in the array, dot key, and then loaded data dot items I dot dot value. So we're whoops, we're going through our array and taking each of the key value pairs, which are both strings in this case, but they could be whatever type of object you want, and placing them into our dictionary right now why are we doing this the reason that we're doing this is because unity the serialization backend in unity cannot serialize unordered collections right you cannot make a public dictionary variable and have that be displayed and editable in the inspector right so in order and the JSON utility uses that same serialization backend, right? So in order to be able to serialize a dictionary to JSON, we need to do this little dance of putting it into an array, serializing the array, pulling it back out, and then putting it back into the dictionary, right? So just a couple little extra lines of code to do that, um, but, you know, worth it because this is what we need to make this work. So then what I'm going to add is just a temporary uh, debug.log line, which is just gonna say data loaded dictionary contains localized text dot count, no, no, not clear, localized text dot count space entries. So we don't actually need this, uh, but I'm just putting this in here so that before we finish the whole thing, we can actually see whether this is working or not, right? And this is something you would do normally as you're developing just to check and make sure what you think is happening is actually happening. So we'll hit OK to that to fix the line endings. And then we will save our script and return to the Unity Editor. And now here in our loading screen scene, we are going to, I'm going to right click, create an empty game object. We're going to label this localization manager attach the script and now we're going to hook this up to our English button so I'm going to expand the canvas highlight the English button and I'm going to add an on click event to the button right so we can use this to call functions when the button is clicked so I'm going to drag in a reference to the localization manager and then I'm going to click where it says no function and from the localization manager, I'm going to choose load localized text. Now remember, load localized text takes a string, right? So now we have this empty field here for our string. And so because I'm setting up the English button, I'm going to grab and copy that file name just so I get it right paste it in and be sure, I missed this when I was practicing, add the .json extension there, right? Because it's not displayed in the file name here, but we do need it to actually open the file. 
So now, when we click our button, this function will be called and we should see a message in the console saying that the number of items that have been loaded from the dictionary, so, or loaded to the dictionary. So let's play, click English, and we can see data loaded, dictionary contains two entries, right? Which is correct. Those are gonna be the entries for the game title and for the start button. Let's quickly set up the German button as well. Same basic procedure. Highlight the German button. I'm going to just hit plus to add a new event. Drag in the localization manager and select load localized text. Grab the name of the German JSON file and add in the .json extension. And let's just test that quickly. Yes, and that works as well, right? If we click right now, it doesn't actually do anything to load the next scene. Um, and so that is the next script that we're gonna write, which is going to be once we've loaded our text data, uh, what are we gonna do next, right? We wanna load our menu. So let me just take a pause here, check the chat. I see some people talking and let me see if I can answer some questions. And then we are going to continue uh, extending our localization manager class to do more cool stuff. Oh, yep, sorry. Request to see the code, let's put that up. There you go. All right, some people talking about other stuff. GM Liquid Media asks, the dictionary can hold images, not just strings, correct? Yeah, you can hold anything. Game objects, other classes, scriptable objects, sprites, sounds, whatever. It's just a data collection, just like an array, but unlike an array, where an array is always gonna use numbers for the addresses, uh, a dictionary could use anything. You could have images be the key for the dictionary. I don't know why you would do that, but you could. Uh, and in this case, we're using strings because they're pleasantly human readable.